Hi there, and welcome to the geodynamics video lectures on the topic of brittle deformation and faulting. Here in the first lecture, we're going to review some rock deformation terminology and then talk a little bit about elasticity. So you can see those are basically our two goals. We'll present rock deformation mechanisms and then go back to talk about elasticity just quickly since we haven't talked about that in a few weeks. Now when we talk about rock deformation, there's a number of terms that get used, and some of the terms um, are used improperly, and the definitions are kind of not that clear, at least in terms of how they're frequently used. So we can be a bit more specific about this, and take terms like brittle and ductile, and refer to those as deformation types. Uh, meaning we're not talking specifically about the details of how the rock is deforming by a certain deformation mechanism, we're just saying that for brittle, we're at relatively cold conditions, maybe near the surface, versus ductile where we're at relatively warm conditions. And that's just um, kind of how we would make the division versus the deformation mechanisms, which are going to be more clearly defined. In particular, they'll have some sort of mathematical uh, relationship, for instance, with elasticity. Um, that's something we've already seen, and we'll talk today about plastic flow. Now, for the deformation types, like I said, these are just general terms where brittle is going to be referring to the fracturing of rock uh, and possibly having slip along a fracture surface, which we would call a fault. And so this is going to be relatively low temperature, relatively low pressure, and fairly large forces because you have to have a sufficient amount of force to fracture the rock. Um, or you may have rapid imposed deformation. Uh, now, with ductile, the difference is that we're talking about the flow or coherent deformation in the rock in a solid state. So this is not molten deformation. It's still solid state, but it's basically flowing in a viscous manner. Um, relatively high temperatures and pressures, small forces, and slow imposed deformation rates. So these are just kind of general descriptions that are useful, for instance, when you see rocks in the field and you can see folds in there and say, okay, this has been deformed ductally. So in contrast to the deformation types that we've just seen, the deformation mechanisms are all going to have a clear mathematical definition, as I've already mentioned. And we've talked about elasticity already in lecture set five and six. Here we're going to talk about plasticity, and in the following set we'll talk about viscous flow. Now, since it's been a few weeks, I'd like you to take a moment to pause the video and see if you can remember what the stress and strain relationship was for an elastic material. So pause the video for a moment and um, come back when you have an idea. All right. Well, hopefully you remember some of this information that was on a slide like this earlier in video lecture set number five. For elasticity, we're talking about a situation where the stress is proportional to strain. And that proportionality, uh, in 1D at least, could be related by something like Young's modulus or shear modulus. Um, and we looked at some cases like that and even um, slightly more involved cases earlier on in uh, lecture sets five and six. Here, if we look at things like stress versus strain, we expect to have a linear relationship where the slope is going to be equal to, in this case, Young's modulus or two times the shear modulus. And the physical relationship you can think of is something like a spring, or I often use this plastic ruler that flexes. And the key thing about the deformation here is that when you apply the stress, the elastic material will be strained and deformed, but then when you remove the stress, it will go back to its original state. So you can see that, again, illustrated graphically here, where a stress is applied, held, and then released, and the strain goes in proportion to stress and then goes back to its original state. Since I have it sitting here, here's my favorite little elastic tool, and that is this ruler where I can push on the end of it and when I remove the force pushing down, it goes back to its original shape. Now, we've already seen that. So that's just our primer to get us started talking about brittle deformation, 
And when we come back in the next video lecture set, we're going to talk about um, the basic ideas of um, plasticity. And so go ahead and take your quiz and come back to hear our introduction to plasticity.